What is going on guys? Welcome back to Stellaris and the Roman Star Empire. Now in the last episode, I kind of promised that we would end the Scourge, but we had some issues and so they're still here. But I'm still confident that in this episode, we'll be able to end this threat to the galaxy. Now, um... I do want to mention that I don't want to show every single battle. I've mentioned this before, um, but I, I just want to say it again because it's getting kind of redundant and, uh, you know, we would have like five episodes of just fighting the Scourge, which I think gets boring. So what I will do is I will show you some of the big battles. One of them is actually going to happen right now. We've got 75k and then another 75k fleet coming into our system here where we have our, well, our three big fleets. Um, and... I'm pretty certain that we're going to win, but we will take some heavy losses, and so we're going to have to rebuild, and I have already made some adjust adjustments to our ships, um, so I can show you our new designs. I've uh, yeah introduced small face disruptors, and we're no longer using the Stormfire autocannons, and I've removed all of the shields from our ships and replaced it with armor, because the enemy weaponry is... Well, sometimes penetrating armor, sometimes just dealing extra damage to armor, so uh, to shields. And so shields are really not all that useful um, because we, we saw that our ships were destroyed while they still had the shields up. So um, clearly we need to invest more in armor. So that's what I've been doing. And of course, I've also just changed the uh, layout of our guns. So I've changed all kinetic weaponry for neutron launches because they deal extra damage to armor and hull and it doesn't matter that they don't deal as much damage to shields because Brathorans don't have shields anyways. And I've done the same thing with our um, great titans um, but here yeah I think I've also replaced the shield capacitator because that also wouldn't really be useful. Anyway those are the changes I've made and uh, they will be in effect after this battle. Um, so let's actually go forward and uh, I don't know where... I think they're coming from this system. Maybe. I'm uncertain. Fleet yeah. action underway. There they are. Okay. So we currently have a science ship over here that's going to have to flee. But that's fine. Let's let's watch this though. So of course um, our Tachyon Lancers are pretty successful. Our Titans haven't shot anything yet. Still no damage. Which is just amazing. I love that we have this sort of attack. 50 hull damage has already happened. Um, the only thing I hate is that we're getting in such close range. I really dislike that. But oh well. Wow. Absolutely. We lost... Holy balls. We lost only one ship. Only a Corvette. That is pretty exceptional. Um, so, what we're going to do is I will build one Corvette Construction and... Complete. I want to build up to full naval capacity. That means I want to build 50 more destroyers. Um, maybe that's a bit much. Maybe we want to build some cruisers as well. Oh, right. And that was one other thing I wanted to show you. I have switched our cruisers so that we're now using the Swarm Strikers and no longer our advanced strike craft. Because they're actually a little bit more powerful. They have more hull points and, and so on and so forth. And I think just overall they're going to be more useful against Brathorans. Um, that was also a helpful comment uh, from you a few episodes ago that mentioned the wiki and how these this design would be m maybe a little bit better against the Scourge. But yeah, anyway, um, so we're rebuilding this and then so a cruiser? I could build four cruisers, uh, not four cruisers, maybe 10 cruisers and then 30 destroyers. So I finished my order, uh, which was quite a lot of clicking, and uh, now we are going to fight this second fleet. Interestingly, there's 40 ship, uh, 45 ships are detected. Well, luckily, we do have some backup coming. The Hithians are sending 27k uh, strength uh, to help us out here. So that is definitely going to be nice. Um, we are going to lose a few more ships now, that is certain. But... It's also okay. So far, look at this. They've only done damage to our armor, and we've already reduced them. The only problem I have is that we're getting in so close. I hate that. Complete. Already lost two destroyers. Okay, we're definitely taking a lot more damage now. Yeah. So, what have we lost? Three destroyers in a Corvette. Okay, let's build that up. 
Okay, well, there you go. And um, we'll get our ships back. Our new general here is now a substance abuser as well. She's not that great. <laughs> She's having a lot of issues. Fighting the Scourge must be really difficult on, like, mentally. Uh, I think that it's just, it's, it's horrifying to fight them. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how our more experienced generals, they don't care. But uh, the new one is just kind of going insane almost. But yeah, anyways, that was the that was the closest fleet. I don't think there's anyone else attacking us now. I have already claimed these two uh, s these two systems, and we'll you know as I said, step by step claim them. Uh, and I don't know what you're doing. Just survey the system. Thank you. And I will come back if there is some great battle going on. So I'm currently working on upgrading our fleets here in Sol Invictus, and unfortunately one of our great admirals has died. Admiral Vuthok Slipway died at the age of 136, and this is terrible, because he was one of our greatest, one of our two awesome generals, and um, yeah, well, it doesn't help. He needs to be replaced. Uh, he can't be truly replaced, but we, we need to find someone that can uh, you know, take on his job, and I think someone who maybe has the same mentality would be good. So, uh, Marcus Pactumius will be the next one uh, that we'll recruit, and uh, he's now got the task of, uh, well, taking care of Classes 5. I'm thinking about renaming this, but maybe I'll just leave at this as well. Um, so far, the uh, Tikan directors are causing a lot of, uh, well, mayhem, and I'm a little bit scared, because there's actually a lot of Thorin's 100k already. Um, it does take a long time to uh, to upgrade our ships. And I'm not sure if you actually make any progress. I don't know why you can't do this at the same time. Oh, you, you are. It's just not shown for some reason. But yeah, so all of our ships are upgrading at the same time. It's just very slow because there was some... I mean, those are some really, you know, huge changes that we're making but anyways um i'll come back as soon as uh, as we're done with upgrading so we just finished another step in the dyson sphere project while not yet complete with the installation of advanced solar harvesters we have begun to reap the benefits of the dyson sphere being built in the helios system the energy gains will only continue to increase as construction continues eventually reaching full operational capacity when the sphere is completed Excellent. Now, we actually do lack minerals at the moment, so let's quickly check out if our sectors have something that we can, uh, we can get, yeah, gather. Uh, the Larongo sector has quite a bit, so let's, yeah, let's drain this stockpile here. Mm, yeah, sure, sure, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, we got 40 minerals, and that should be enough to continue the license. No, that's actually not enough. Wow, okay. I would have I would have expected this to be enough. Well, okay. Let me quickly see. There's someone who needs energy credits. It's because we could be trading then. Maybe hmm. Let's trade with our partners first. I don't think they have I don't think they have anything in terms of minerals they want to give us. Ah, oh, they do have a little bit. But they don't want energy for it, right? Mm, no. Do you need energy? No. Okay, uh, fine, well, mm, I don't want to waste the energy, but now all of a sudden we, we do have quite a lot. Um, so let's quickly check this out, where's our sector? Ah, whatever, fine, then we'll, we'll not deal with it, we'll just finish building these two destroyers, and we'll just leave it at that for now. As soon as our ship leaves hangar, we're going to have to pay quite a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have amassed a massive fleet. Um, it's been led by Julia Agrippina, of course, but we have got Nona Ogulanius here as well, although she's probably not going to do a huge, hugely amazing job. And then we've got two new admirals, uh, Marcus Pactumius. Um, he is the replacement for Vuthok Slipway. And then we have a brand new Admiral as well, Decima Vitrithicus. Uh, she is in charge of the newly built fleet of uh, 10 cruisers and 30 destroyers. So we're right at our naval capacity and uh, we're about to enter the Yibar system. 
and we want to deal some damage. So let's let's get in here first, and we'll see how this goes. Let's uh, slow down a little bit because I do want to watch this this fight. Well, okay. So those are quite a few ships. Let's immediately attack and see who attacks there first. Okay, our Titans are the ones shooting first. Uh, that's nice. Then our battleships. Right, okay. Then all of our neutron launchers and now the corvettes are coming in. Very, very good. So far, no damage from up. We have not received any damage. Whoa! We destroyed them and we didn't take any damage. We just didn't take any damage. So yeah, obviously, um, Nona has leveled up to uh, level 7. And then we've got Marcus who's also leveled up, but the Kima, or the Sima, the Trisicus, she didn't even get to do shit, so she didn't even level up. But yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, so let's send in... Uh, can we... not send in our fleet? That's so weird. Apparently we can't. There you go. Build a Starbase Outpost. And only once that's done, um, will we move on. Yeah, we're basically, this, this is how we're going to go. This is how we're going to do this. We're going to do this one system by system. So I'm not going to show you every single time we fight them. You see how superior we are. But if we do fight a slightly larger fleet, then I might come back and show you um, more of, uh, of the Roman battle capabilities. So this is pretty cool, um, all the while I'm fighting the Prithoran Scourge, uh, there is this uh, thing happening, the thin Synthoid Multiplex, uh, Determined Exterminators uh, Machine Uprising that has just started in the Great Hithian Empire. Unfortunately for them, they're at war with their entire, well, uh, federation, uh, including the Tikhan Directors, so they're gonna get squished relatively quickly, still interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, I will report, but um, yeah, they're, they're no match for us. We we don't we don't care. They do have, I mean, they do have two 30k fleets and a 14k fleet. So actually, holy balls! No, they do have they have quite a lot of strength, but I don't think they're really going to be a big threat. Um, and I'm not really too concerned about them. Now here we finally have some terrible, terrible news. Uh, Julia Octavi Octavia Agrippina has finally died at the age of 134 years. Um, she was the last of our great leaders, um, and now we're really, we're really in need of commanders. I mean, Nona Ogolanius certainly no, uh, no admiral capable of. Uh, replacing either Vuthok nor Julia. She's the best that we have, and she is not in a great mindset. Um, but she's the most experienced commander we have, and um, so yeah, that will obviously significantly reduce the uh, efficiency of our fleets, but there's nothing I can really do. Uh, we have to recruit someone new, and I suppose that Nona will now take Julia's place upon one of the great titans. Um, but yeah, let's first check out the replacement. A, yeah, Sexta Tedius, I think, I mean, honestly, maybe a scout. Apia Pompeius, I think you're, you're going to be the one with the job. There you go, enjoy. And so, let's quickly check this out. So we've got the classes one, and um, that should be led by Nona. Then we've got the, uh, yeah, and then we've got various other fleets. All this, all these battleships. They should probably be commanded by the Sima Vitrinicus. Yeah, Vitrinicus. There you go. And then... Yeah, you are in control of this. And then this small fleet will be commanded by Apia Pompeius. There you go. Okay. Well, so far we're waiting. We're waiting for the constructor ship. I'm thinking about maybe... Actually, you know what? It's probably useful if we were to uh, build another constructor ship. Because we're kind of just waiting on them. And that's stupid. So, let's get one more and then we're ready to roll. Today's episode is featuring quite a lot of prominent deaths. After our two great admirals, Vuthark and Julia, we now also have the death of Basileus Augustus Tiberius 
the fourth of the House Palaya Locus. He died at the age of 139 years old. And now we have a new ruler, Empress Ag well, Empress Basilissa Augusta Lucia II. Now, she's 115 years old. She is uh, a world shaper, explorer, and space miner. She has the agenda of a scientific leap. But most importantly, she is leading one of our factions. She is leading the human supremacy faction, the xenophobes. And so there's one thing that xenophobes have wanted for, for a long time, and that is core world exclusivity. And this is something that Basilissa Augusta Lucia will, uh, well, will put forward. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have to change a few things. First of all, first and foremost, maybe, we are going to finish this research, the flesh is weak. The cybernetic implants that our father had stopped for a long time, he stalled this progress. We're finally going to start this research and finish it, hopefully. And then, uh, yeah, we need to look at our species. So there's, I've already had a little bit of an idea as to what I want to do. Now, um, as you can see, the planets that we have in our core worlds, they are continental, continental, there's a Gaia world in there, then Hyperion is a continental world. We've got a Tundra world, We've got a tropical world and an ocean world. Now I think the ocean world and the tropical world will leave because we have 95 habitability here and 95 habitability here. But in the tundra world, humans only have five, 55 habitability. And so we're going to do two, two things. First of all, we're going to terraform Zikmark to a continental world. And we are also going to enslave the two species that we have here, the Zelvan and the Zygmark, for so long have uh, experienced, um, well, residence, and now we're going to change that drastically. They will now become slaves. So, uh, first of all, let's set their rights. Uh, actually, we can also modify their template, uh, except we can't. Okay, so we'll set your rights. So, you no longer have citizenship, you will now be... We could have a caste system, but I think we'll just make you slaves. There you go. Awesome. And the Zelvan will make into slaves as well. Now they are strong. We can modify their template. We could actually give them something. We could make them other species own a... Yeah, let's add the charismatic trait to them and create that template. And we'll apply the template as well. Yeah. And they will New be they will become slaves. And then let's check this out. Yondarum. Uh the Yondarum. We should make them slaves, I think. They are slaves already, right? They are slaves. Okay. Yondarum are slaves. The Xarians, slaves, slaves, the Zinrath, a caste system. Sorry for the cut there, that was unintentional, but uh, I got a call. Anyway, uh, we were talking about the Zinrath, and I think about creating a template for them as well. And we gotta get, make them charismatic, I mean, why not? Make, make them good and desirable slaves, right? Um, so, yeah, that's happening. And then... The Savix, you're already charismatic, you're domestic servants, that's fine. Can we, we can actually modify your template as well. Um, hmm. Well, we can make you, does any of this matter really? Uh, don't want to make you strong, don't make you talented, quick learners, traditional. Make you, make you easy. Conservationists, there you go. Alright, um. And then, Rathalians, we already have... How, okay, we can create all kinds of new templates, which is kind of interesting. So let's just get rid of... Mm, well, that doesn't really matter to me. And what about here? We could make you... Yeah, we can make you better slaves. So let's create that template too. And then, the Lorongo, your slaves. Now, subsistence is your living standards. Hmm, that's pretty low. We'll probably leave it at that. Unless, of course, we could also make you undesirable. But I don't think that's 
exactly how we would do this. We don't, uh, we don't, we're not xenophobic. Our, our country isn't, uh, our ethos isn't, and so we can't actually purge people. They will only be displaced, and that doesn't really, I don't think that works really. Like, so, yeah, whatever. If we can't kill them, then we don't need to purge them. We can just keep them as slaves. Okay, the Hithians, you have residents. Mm, sorry to tell you, no more residents for you. Yeah, you're slaves now. And Favarians, you're in the caste system. I'm sorry, but you're going to be slaves too. But you will be charismatic. And I'll make you slaves. you slaves. You have residence. Sorry, no more. You're slaves too. All right. So those are some somewhat radical changes. Uh, we also have... Yeah, we're actually quite over our naval capacity, which isn't really a big problem because I am building up one more star base here, and that is going to be one with an anchorage, so that's that's perfectly fine. Um, and then we'll also build up the naval logistics office, and that should be enough to get back to 700 fleet strength. Yeah, as you can see, I've uh, expanded quite nicely here, and we'll only continue to do that, but unfortunately not in this episode. So there's one more, um, I guess. But uh, I think off camera I will I will try and uh, and and at least deal a little bit more damage to the scourge. But we've not really met any meaningful resistance, so it's really just a matter of time until we're done. Anyways, that was it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.